is Hogan Gaskins Day, and I'm going to read a parish proclamation about Hogan. And then I know there's probably people in here who have no idea who Hogan is, and so I'm going to share a little bit of that with you as well. So the parish proclamation is, in grateful acknowledgement and with sincere gratitude, heartfelt appreciation, and deep abiding affection for the innumerable and estimable and indispensable contribution of time, talent, energy, and skill in various and sundry ways in which he has so freely, deeply, and cheerfully given to the parish, its member, and the greater Jacksonville community by unanimous vote the vestry of St. Anne's Parish and with full affirmation and confirmation of the members of said parish, the clergy, wardens, and vestries of St. Anne's do hereby declare, announce, affirm, and sufficiently proclaim that the fourth Sunday in September, which this year is September 26, is known, recognized, acknowledged, and duly regarded as Hogan Gaskins Day. Now, for those of you who know Hogan, you know that that's only the tip of the iceberg. Um, Hogan, for those of you who don't know, was a dentist here in town who among one of the wonderful things he did was when he retired from dentistry, he took his skills that he had learned from using tiny little tools and working on people's mouths and trans that into an artistry in woodworking. And he also had a vision to not only glorify God, but to give us a little sampling of what God's heavenly home is like. And this church, the interior, looks the way it does because of Hogan. Everything from the cornices around the windows that point our eye up to heaven, to the crosses that we wear on Sundays, to the woodworking here on the altar rail, to the bed coverings, to this wonderful cross that hangs over us and to the stations of the cross around the room. They were all Hogan's vision. They were Hogan's handiwork. They were his gift to St. Anne's. Um, and beyond that, he's also responsible for the memorial garden and columbarium we have outside. He didn't want this just to be our home in life. He wanted it to be our home afterwards as we go, as we move beyond. And, um, Gene, you can probably speak to this, the, the committee that he spearheaded and got the Memorial Garden going, they would have these like monthly cocktail parties or block parties to celebrate the neighbors who were gonna be in that neighborhood. Um, and so, you know, some of you have probably never even walked back there, or you, we tend to forget it's there. They and were called barbecues. Barbecues. They were barbecues because, of course, you're being cremated to go into the columbarium. Oh. So you can tell they had a great sense of humor as well. And I think it's very appropriate that we celebrate Hogan Gaskins Day smack dab in the middle of the time of year that we're talking about stewardship and giving and particularly this year when our theme is sharing the love, because Hogan is just a wonderful example of how one individual can share Christ's love in such a way with a community and leave a legacy. I mean, it makes me think of, um, there's so many people that came before us that the things they gave and did to sustain this church that we, are ben that we benefit from now and how there will be people who come after us that we are in present times doing that. And so I'm going to sort of segue into a little bit of the sharing the love talk, which um, the last two Sundays you've heard from Noah and you heard from Ed, who have, who have been members, have been coming to attending this church for five and three years. I've been attending this church probably for 55 years, give or take some years that I lived elsewhere or maybe a little lapse and when I was in that chaos that Jeremiah was talking about. Um, but when I think about this church, I feel I feel exactly the way Ed and Noah did, that this, this, this is home for me. When my life starts feeling out of kilter, if I come back, I come to church, it sort of rights the ship and I'm back on track. Um, but, but it's home because of the people who are here. I look in this congregation, I'm going to get emotional doing this. 
And the people in this congregation raised me. Every important thing that happened in my life from being confirmed to going to premarital counseling to getting married to having my children baptized all happened in this church. But even beyond that, there were people who, who as a young adult, came in and out of this church because maybe they were married to someone in the military and they came and they dove in and they gave so much to this church, but they also showed me and modeled to me either through their friendships or the things they did in church um, what I was capable of and what God was calling me to do. And more recently, I've been on the vestry and the relationships that are formed there and the positions that I mean, God does have a great sense of humor, you know, that he puts you in, like, you know, he throws you a hurricane, and then when you're really content, and, but maybe he, he throws out a pandemic, or, you know, there's lots of twists and turns, and you got to adapt, and the people here, um, I think, have helped me adapt and grow, and one of the things that's happened is over the years, because of my involvement in the church, is I've attended some stewardship conferences, and during those, I have been called to, uh, to approach stewardship from a different way. And I'd like to share that with y'all a little bit. Yes, stewardship is about giving to the church and writing a check and supporting, and supporting the, bid, the budget. But more than that, stewardship is God's call to us to a closer relationship with him. Because face it, it's scary to, write, to commit to write a check every month. It's scary to give money when you're not quite sure they're going to use it the way you want to use it. But it's true. Once you start and once you sort of relinquish that control to God, it deepens your relationship with him, with those around you, with the experience you have at church each day. So I would just ask for each of you to think about how you can share the love, either by jumping in and getting involved, um, how you can commit to pledging to the church. And I also want to thank you for the love and gifts that you have shared with me and my family um, since the time I was two, since this year when we were putting together virtual service. You guys are amazing, and I'm just grateful to be a part of this community. So thank you.